Hello. All right, let's see. That's better. How are you? Welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel, where I share jungle with you. <laughs> Waiting for some folks to get on the stream, and tonight we're going to do a topical Wednesday, 7 a.m. live stream. Should be fun. And the question we're answering is, what's the right chicken breed to get for your backyard? And especially if you want to use them as pets, which they make excellent pets, and for eggs. And I think that's what most backyard suburban chicken owners are probably gonna be shooting for, is the pet vibe and the eggs vibe. Well, I researched a ton and I found two breeds and we're gonna talk all about it. We'll go look at them. Ah. That's better. All right, let's see if I can, let's see if I can operate this. Uh, there we are. Okay, so first we'll go back to the homemade chicken coop. Now, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I am no carpenter, yet I was able to build this chicken coop. So the reason I say that is this is not self-deprecation, just reality to say if I can build it, you can build it. If you're thinking about getting back your chickens, then you're probably also thinking about how you're going to coop them up maybe. Hey, Camel. First first comment, Camel. Thank you. Yeah. Look at these little hens. They are just incredible. So fun. Oh, congratulations. Good luck with the new job tomorrow. Nothing like a new job. So selecting a chicken breed is a pretty big decision in the sense that chickens will live to be, you know, maybe up to four and a half years old and you're going to be caring for them and, you, you know, you want to probably get the right ones. And I researched them for about two months, chicken breeds just voraciously consumed every bit of chicken information I could possibly find. And then compared that with where I could get chickens. And there's a couple ways to get chickens um, that I found. One was you can order them online and they'll mail them to your post office in a box, <laughs> which seems like a pretty cool way to do it actually. And you get a lot more flexibility if you're willing to do it that way. But a lot of the hatcheries have uh, a minimum amount of, of chickens you need to buy. And uh, so depending on how you're going to do it, you know, I can't have that many due to the rules in my area. So, you know, going to a place like... Yeah, mixed breed birds. Yeah, we'll talk about that breeds here in a second for sure, but good point. Yeah, talk about yeah, which breed, but also mixed breed birds. But yeah, so you can get them online, of course, get different breeds online, and then you can also get them at feed stores. Hey, James Tropicals, good to see you. Welcome. Yeah, the feed stores like Tractor Supply or maybe your local hardware store, if you're in an agricultural area, might have chicks. And then you're probably limited to what... Hey, Garden of, Tw Garden of Twitty is on. Good to see you. Shout out to Radiohead. SR1, hello, sir. Good to see you. 
Yeah, so we have, I'm in Florida, so we have a number of tractor supplies around here, and that's the place I zeroed in on. I was actually looking at getting it, maybe getting chicks at a local farm. <laughs> which really appealed to me. They had mixed breed birds, but the thing that, that uh, steered me away from doing that was just that I wanted to get the chicks when they were just hatched because I had read that getting the chickens when they're as tiny as possible, they, can, they kind of form some kind of bond with you and that they're, they'll be the best for pets if you, if you get them that way. And these chickens are incredibly tame. Like easy to just walk over and pick up and catch. Jack has them so that they'll allow to be laid on their back and cradled like a baby. These Rhode Island Reds will do that. The Plymouth Rocks want none of that. The Plymouth Rocks are these barred birds here. And then the, oh, oh, I know, I know. You know what they're doing? They're starting to get vocal because, you know, look at, yeah, they're making them crazy. Listen, where's the treats? Where are the treats? Honestly, stop talking. Give up the treats. All right, I'm gonna give you this, your favorite treat. These are spoiled hens. They get probably too much in the way of worms. Sure is fun to watch him eat. Yeah, they can't imagine anything else in their lives if you get them when they're first hatched. Yeah, so we eventually decided we would start to see what Tractor Supply had, and there's about three of them within a fairly easy drive of here, within a half hour maybe one about an hour away, a couple of them half hour away. So um, started calling around, but the two breeds that I was really looking for based on a, a few qualities, one was their nature being docile and super friendly. Uh, another one was that they laid good eggs, that they were good egg layers. And then the other one was that they could stand the conditions here, which are like really hot in the summer. And it gets never really into freezing but close to it in the winter so yeah and <clears throat> excuse me the two bird breeds that we decided on were plymouth rock birds barred rocks the, these two and then the other one are rhode island red hybrids they're a cross between the rhode island red and the rhode island white dwarf bird and they're actually considered to be I believe the term is bantam chickens or a smaller breed or, or almost bantam. I read in one place, but I don't know if that's exactly true. But the point is they're a little smaller and you can see they're a little smaller than those barred rocks. These are both heritage breeds, they call them, because they have been in existence for you know, over 200 years in America as an agricultural bird. In fact, this, this barred rock type of chicken is on chicken feed it's really an iconic breed of chicken but it was an iconic chicken breed back into the early days of america and, and so on as well so just really interesting hardy hardy bird and i think they use the barred rock and cross it with a i think they cross it with a, a leghorn which with that white you know like foghorn and leghorn chicken like that big white chicken to make the cornish hen which is like an i think that's true hard to say well anyway they they can produce chicken breeds that'll grow to be like 10 over 10 pounds in two months but the, those are meat chickens but of course these are both considered to be meat chickens and egg layers they're going to be only egg layers in my little backyard farm but uh they both have known to have a docile nature, both known to have a, large eggs, good egg producer, like 200 to 250 eggs a year, 2.5 ounce eggs, which is an extra large egg. That's a large, certainly a very large egg. <clears throat> but really they're, 
their personality has just won us all over. <clears throat> Jack said yesterday that uh, he actually prefers the chickens to the bunnies, which is really interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Yeah, I keep saying they need to install like a, you know, a cough button or a clear your throat button on YouTube. There's no like easy way to do that, I don't think. All right. All right, we're, we're going to put the chickens in the coop. Come on, girls. All right. Woo. Leghorn chickens come in more colors than white. Oh, that's kind of cool. I love the look of the leghorn chickens. Huh. Let's see. Will the natural process just take over with no need for intervention? Three in. Sally the sea monster. C is for chicken. Is it true chickens are reptiles? Falkhorn Leghorn was not white. Really? <laughs> that could totally be the case. <laughs> Come on. Come on, chick chick. That's it, you can't resist. And up you go. All of them cooped. Right, right about that time of the night where I'd feel fine just cooping them up. I think I will. I, I've considered not even shutting this door at night. Yeah, I believe you, Vicky. That I, I think I probably misremembered it. I haven't watched that in a while. But... That's very interesting. It's funny how your memories, you, you know, you can't really trust your memories. I know that. Your mind will just replace bits and pieces of it with other things. And yeah, people go, no, that's totally not what happened. Like, oh, wow. Maybe that's the, yeah. I just made that up. Yeah. So I've considered not even shutting the chicken door at night to the, to the hen house. But um, I think I'm supposed to on the, to shut them, you know, inside in a closed area every night. And I do. But uh, there's really, really no predator action happening in, around here. I mean, we've got an occasional raccoon. And, um, yeah, I've got to do something with this wire, this cage. Poor garden snake got caught in it the other day. I was like, oh, man, I created a trap. But I haven't seen anything else get stuck. I got it out. It survived. It was a little freaked out, though. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking of building a, uh, a rabbit tractor and chicken tractor for the backyard. All right, we're going we're gonna to let these bunnies out. We're going to let the bunny magic out. You ready, Penelope? You ready for a little, little run time? Yeah, all right. I'm going to aim it towards this sugar cane patch and... Grab Penelope with both hands so I don't drop her. I swear, you are the sweetest rabbit. Right back to the sugar cane. As if on instinct. What are you gonna do back there? Yeah, you're right. It's better to be safe than sorry. Never let your leave the door open. You have one bad experience. Yeah, one one predator with a mind to eat the chickens that 
happens to come. We actually had a coyote at one point that was oh, made the news kind of thing. Look at this. You never know, right? The guy that I was um, working with over at Home Depot to get a lot of the wood cut for that chicken coop had 20 chickens and he had built this, he showed me pictures of his chicken coop. It was this masterful thing capable of housing 20 chickens and then some. Uh, all caged in. I mean, he knew how to really, he was a, really knew how to build things. But he said his flock of 20 was taken down to three chickens. And, if, and he couldn't figure out because how they were getting in or how the chickens were being eaten or anything. And he finally figured it out because he put a game cam that the raccoons were coming and actually pulling the chickens through the wire. <laughs> it's insane. But, uh, yeah, anyway, fertile, but he was just having a really hard time with the predator, <clears throat> the predator situation. Look at this bunny. Is this incredible? You can see she's getting her little, uh, whiskers on her cheeks. Those will get longer and longer. It'll actually be, look like a beard here pretty soon. But she's starting to really grow in. We sure do wish we could uh, let Thumper and Penelope run together down here in the bunny run, but that's a recipe for baby rabbits. Almost instantly. Bet you if I come out, you'll come out to be get pet. Yeah, I, I agree. Those raccoons are definitely not to be, not to be played with. I, I saw that video where you, there's a raccoon hanging upside down, hanging by his back foot on a branch and using both of his hands to open up a bird feeder. <laughs> and they've got thumbs. <clears throat> You don't have thumbs though, Penelope. You still love to dig. A white rabbit covered in dirt. That is a favorite digging corner for them. I feel like it checks the a box in the rabbit mind to be able to dig a hole. Like if you're a rabbit and you never get to dig a hole, these rabbits get to dig a hole every day. She's getting big though. She is easily twice as big as the male rabbit, her brother, Thumper, who we'll grab out here in a second. And he's All right, we're back. High five. <laughs> See how this goes. Oh no. Penelope, what have you done all right I'm gonna take out thumper get his paws sandy grab that guy
see if this zoom works. No. Hey, Thumper. It's gonna go right for that hole. You see how his coat is almost like a raccoon's on the back? Then he's got those beautiful blue eyes. See how he loves to rub his chin on the cement? They have a very di diverse environment to, enact, to interact with in this bunny run. So I intentionally obstacles and plants and all kinds of stuff. And plus this, the soil in this yard is very, very sandy. Thumper. Loves the pigeon pea. Found that hole. Started digging the hole. Mm, nothing like getting the snout right down there in the <laughs> right down there <laughs> digging that hole now this rabbit once you start petting him will just go nearly catatonic he's such a tame rabbit oops And it's nice and sturdy. What do you think, Thumper? Would you let me grab you out of there? Where are you? Hmm. Down in the rabbit hole. Let's see if I can. See if I can. Here we go. Going in for the rabbit. Chickens are easier to catch than rabbits. Yeah, he doesn't feel like being picked up. And I generally don't. I figure it's a pretty unnatural thing for a rabbit to be picked up anyhow. The dog and a cat, they like it, but. Rabbit, it seems like they tolerate, which I would think would be super bitter. Yeah, uh, good news on the fig tree, by the way. We're into the second growth phase. See, it's got little baby figs on it. So after the rust and all the leaves fell off, now it's grown new growth. And that's why I tell people don't sweat it with the rust and so on. Just feed it tons of bunny turds and your fig tree is going to absolutely go off. It's gonna be reborn as soon as all the other growth falls off. Yeah, you're right. right. Yeah, cats and dogs are picked up by, for loving purposes, carried around by their parents, more or less. And yeah, rabbits, if they're picked up, that's probably the last thing they ever experience. <laughs> you pick up by an eagle. What's the sound? <laughs> it just comes swooping down. Yeah, rabbit is definitely 100% prey animal. Hard to compare it with a dog or a cat, really. And it's interesting, Thumper is very furry, but his head is pretty small underneath all that fuzz. I, mean, 
I would be pretty surprised if uh, But they've been programmed their whole life, these rabbits, to uh, be about as chill as a rabbit can be. After they get there. That's it. Isn't that nice, Thumper? Yeah, it's like uh, you learn the nature of your animals. Like after they have a little time, let them dig a hole. Yeah, then they're in the right frame of mind to get pet. You see how luxurious this coat looks on this rabbit? Yep, if I go down any closer, I go out of range. Yeah. That's cute when he runs like that. This, uh, this Persian mulberry, holy moly, it has just... Yeah, that's right. They they also rabbits can absolutely that yeah, they can flee or they can fight. Right? They'll they'll fight each other. In fact, I was asking uh, Suzanne over at Funky Chicken Farm when I, we were talking about I'm going to get another rabbit, and uh, you know I have one male, one female, and tell me that or whatever that they'll especially can you know go right to a very they're fighting big time, like where the rabbits get seriously hurt. So, yeah, the weird thing about the rabbit, they kind of like to have their own space, you know? When they're little, we had to separate them as soon as they got just a little bit old because, yeah, they... Oh, there you go. Let me think, Thumper. I'm a little freaked out. Oh, he did... Oh, I'm bummed I didn't get that. He just did like a two-foot hop. When they were little, they would do super high hops. They really don't hop as high anymore. Oh, the females fighting the females worse than the males fighting the males. Yeah. <laughs> I would go, I'd love to be able to feed them 100% off of just stuff that's growing in the yard. But when they're little, at least, I'm going to keep giving them pellets. I'm going to make sure I'm giving them enough food, but I think I'm suffering the other side of the problem now, which is giving them too much food. All right, let me see. I'm going to try to, try to catch the rabbit. Let's see if we can accomplish that. Well, I still do need to come back out and give them some pellets, but I'll do that later. You hear those chickens are sound asleep. Not bad. Keep checking this moringa tree. Bigger and bigger every day. It's already got bark on the bottom. And the other success story of recent it is, of course, the roselle that we've got growing over here in pots. It's like a week growing and it's already showing redness in the stalk. Surprised a few of them didn't sprout from the pot, but I'll show you what, we're, what Roselle looks like. That is a strong growing plant. I can't wait to harvest it. Here's what it looks like you know, two months later. is this which is a hibiscus Roselle is a hibiscus and uh, grows this beautiful green leaf you see the redness in the stalk the flowers are edible 
I talk about it a lot. And it's certainly a good pick for any yard. Very, very easy to grow. Just next to pigeon pea that's also doing pretty well. But yeah, the Roselle, that's definitely one of the highlights of the yard right now. And I continue to watch my banana hand up here grow. We'll be picking that soon and putting it in the dehydrator. Oh, interesting. Strange behavior from the banana tree. I wonder why. Yeah, my banana grove has recently been expanded. I planted two pups, three pups, and one larger. Uh, these are all musa, giant musa. There's one there, one there. I just recently put these in. One there, and then I planted this larger one, which doesn't look too good right now, but I generally just leave the leaves on. Oh, yeah, normal, well, normal can be good. Maybe you've created a new variety. <laughs> Genetic abnormality, the spice of life. And uh, yeah, my mango branches, for my second gigantic trimming. I prepared this, if you see this, this tree, this Tommy Atkins, it was much taller. I trimmed it way, way back, and that's gonna promote a lot of branching and a lot of new growth, which is what I want, keep it bushy. I don't want a skyscraper, especially next to the house, and hey, we might get a hurricane or two. We've got three around Florida right now, at this moment. There's one down, um, yeah, down, towards the Yucatan Peninsula. There's one out in the middle of the Atlantic that's kind of getting ready to jet west and then go north. And then there's another one farther south that's getting ready to move west. So yeah, they're out there. It's been a very active season this year and I'm a little concerned about it uh, this year. I don't know, I got a weird suspicion about the hurricanes this year, sixth sense call it. Usually I don't feel that way, so. I don't know, maybe it's all the... I don't know what it is. But look at this, see that? Hurricane Dorian, 2019. That wasn't that long ago. When we're writing down with Sharpie on the tree fort, hur hurricane names, you know it's getting serious. No, there aren't really any flamingos around here. Interesting thing is though, we've got wild parrots in my neighborhood, screecher parrots, these green parrots that fly in gigantic flocks make a very distinctive loud screeching sound. We've got screecher parrots, we've got uh, peregrine falcons, osprey, 